Welcome back to another tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about complex objects. At the moment there is only one. That's the elder tree. Um, let's first take a look at the original elder tree, which is still useful um, and very basic. It's um, basically in an X shape when viewed from above. And if you view it down low, um, at certain angles it looks alright, but it looks a little bit mirrored there and um, other times you, you notice the patterns are the same and you think, oh, well that's fairly obvious, the, the same tree and when there's many of them they, they, and they're lined up the same way you, you see regularities in it. And, um, it's not as nice as something that was modelled properly as a tree. Now, you could go and model each individual tree, um, it's a very time consuming approach. Uh, there are also tools in other 3D apps which will go and model trees for you based on various different parameters, so you know, feel free to explore those. Um, the complex objects in RTB are more for, for um, all sorts of different objects that we'll see as time goes on, but to begin with um, I'm going to show you how it can be used in, as a tree. So if we click here we see a similar sort of tree, a little bit. We click again, we see a slightly different tree again. Click again, oh, it's a different pattern. So um, this is all based on um, a bit of randomness and a bit of organization with how these branches might form. Um, I'll show you how that's done in a little bit more detail. But um, basically you keep clicking and what I like to do is simply click and then if I don't like the shape of it, delete, 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 click, delete, click, delete, click. Oh, I like that one. I'll keep that one. Um, and so um, you can create and go through many different um, styles of trees before you find the one you like. Um, alternatively, if you want to get creative, you can go into um, Xpacker and um, edit the trees and, and create your own randomness. Um, I'll show you a little bit of that, but it's going to have to be a lot of um, trial and error as it took me to, to create these sort of trees. Um, so what we're getting here, um, th there's a fair amount to cover here, so I'm just going to try and cover the, the main points. In Xpacker we have the Elder Tree, that was our X tree, and we have the Elder 3D tree. The main difference being this is a complex object. How do I know it's complex? Because it has child objects. If we go to the elder objects, it doesn't have um, any child objects. And um, so this 3D tree is really just a placeholder saying, okay, we've got some sort of um, object. It's actually made up of these child objects. One is a level of detail object, uh, which is sitting there. And that is pretty much a copy of the elder tree. Um, if you go to the properties here though, it has no group, so it won't show up in the interface up here. Uh, the elder tree is specified as a tree, so when we search for trees, the, it comes up in our list there. Um, so we've got um, yeah those, uh, those properties there, if I switch back here again, um, and we just look at the 3D one, we see it also had a trunk there. Now if I look at the trunk, which is basically this 3D object that runs up the middle there, um, that then had a number of other uh, objects, and if I look at those, most of them are the same one, which is the, the branch coming out. I do have a, a simpler branch with um, less twigs and small branches, and I have some leaves up the top. Now each of these has a birth chance. Um, so that branch has a 90% chance of being born. If it is born, it sits in this sort of position. Uh, that's 3.7 metres up in the air. Um, it has this sort of scale, so it's a little bit bigger than uh, the, the higher branches. If we went to one of the higher branches, it starts to scale down. Um, and so you can create a, a tree-looking object um, using this patterns and um, some additional randomness that you can build in. Uh, and you can play a lot with this sort of stuff. Um, on top of that, when people create trees, there's already randomness built in, so you can override that, and that'll be in addition 
to any trees you make. Um, what's not so obvious, um, the LOD um, object that was there. Um, so when we zoom out, we want a simpler object because if I just pan right back out here, which one's complex and which one's simple? It's not so easy to tell from a distance. So when games are uh, rendering this, you want to render a simpler object because if we have a, a look at those complex objects, they are quite detailed. You look at the amount of points and polygons in those and it, it does add up. Um, you've got to be very careful with how many branches you might actually have popping out in your trees. Um, you'd be surprised how quickly it can overwhelm if you have uh, branches on branches on branches. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's plant a few more. Um, you can plant them using the same methods, but for these complex ones, I, I tend to want it um, near a road that I'm running. So I'll, I'll just um, am I adding roads gravel? That'll do. Um, so I'll just add a road. Yep, and. Um, Let's go back to the objects and let's just drag those ones a bit closer over there. We'll put this one over here, put this one over here. Uh, let's just turn wireframe off for a bit. Um, go back to uh, adding our objects, uh, single object, select, make sure that, oops, that's the only one selected and we'll put a, th a few more of those just near the road. Um, I won't really care about their shape at the moment. Um, so I'll just click, 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 click. Control A to select all. I'll go to the properties. I'll just tell them all to cast shadows and to collide as well. If you've got trees out to the side there, you don't want them casting shadows or colliding because they won't really contribute to your to your gameplay. Um, and if you are putting objects out here, I wouldn't even bother making them complex objects. All right, I'm going to save that off. I'm going to export that out, and then we'll go and load it up in the AC editor and see what it thinks of this. So we're in the AC editor now, and I'm just going to open up that uh, object. I've done it before, so I know what it looks like. And we'll just pop it in here. And I just want to purposely view it from a distance. Um, because, let's just um, turn that f fog down. Um, where is it? Fog blend. Fog linear. Change it to 20,000 so you can see it a bit more clearly. Um, so as we zoom in here, I'll just come a little bit faster. You might notice that the objects are popping in from their lower level of detail. There we've got a mixture into the higher level of detail. So those ones at the back will pop a little bit. Um, and you see them change. So you can edit the um, the objects and just change them a bit to, to adjust for that pop depending on whether you've um, got a, a track that has a, a long um, blend of the fog or, or whether it's um, fairly foresty and crowded in you may want to change that um, popping in of the level of detail. But there we have the the um, trees casting shadows there and let me just zoom in along there get to a more forested bit and um, yeah it's working pretty well um, you can change the illumination there. Yeah, play with that. Um, change the angles. Um, and if we we come down as you zoom into the, the objects, it's reasonably good pattern. Um, you could just by clicking on that and changing the material, change the amount of light popping through there. Um, and adjust it however you like. Um, just for a plaything, you can put it up really high, and um, you can see the the trunks are, are putting their uh, shadow there too as well. 
Um, so there are some things I, I didn't cover, just mentioning that, that shadow there. Um, if we um, pop back into XPacker, let me just run that again. Uh, I'll open the Yorkshire, go to that object. Um, in there we have um, a couple of objects and they have, um, well this one here has a, a special meaning if we go to that. Um, it's not a shadow but it, it has a special purpose of LOD. You could have a special purpose of a shadow object. Um, here um, I'm really just using the, the trunks as shadows but say you had a, a complex um, grandstand um, sitting somewhere and um, as you zoomed out um, you may have uh, a level of D detail object in there. You may also want a different object to be used as the casting of the shadow. So a very complex detailed object could have a, a much simpler object doing the casting of the shadow and that can um, just make things um, faster to render when you're in game. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions post them in the uh, comments and I'll be doing some more um, detailed videos on XPacker and how you can use that as well. Thanks for watching.